Hi guys and welcome to this video. I am going to talk about what a Punit square is and how to use it. But before I get into all the details, let's do a quick review of what the terms I will be using in this video actually mean so we can get a clear mind on this. So term number one, what is a gene? A gene is a unit of DNA found on a chromosome that is passed from parent to offspring. So say this is a chromosome, right? On the strand of DNA that makes up the chromosome, one part of it is called a gene. And genes control what trace an organism has. So for example, a gene may code for eye color. The second term I will be using is allele. Alleles are the alternate forms of a single gene. They can be dominant or recessive. An example is, if a gene codes for eye color, then the alleles may be blue eyes, which may be dominant, and brown eyes, which may be recessive, and this can be vice versa. Next term, genotype. A genotype is a combination of alleles, one from mom and one from dad, in an organism. Alleles are represented by letters, a capital letter for dominant alleles and common letters for recessive alleles. In this video, I'll be calling the capital letters big and the common letters little. So a genotype is a combination of dominant and recessive alleles of a particular gene. These are examples of genotypes. It is easy to confuse genotypes with phenotypes, but they are completely different. And let's see why. A phenotype is an observable characteristic that is a result of a genotype. So, for example, the combination of alleles in a genotype may result in a person having a certain height. So if that person has the genotype big T, big T, then that person will be tall. And tall is the phenotype, the characteristic you see. So you see the difference between genotype and phenotype? So back to Punnett squares. What are they? A Punnett square is a square diagram that is used to predict all the possible genotypes of a cross between two organisms. In the 1900s, Dr. Reginald Punnett created the Punnett square. And this is an example of how one may look. So how actually do you use them? Let's see. So say you have a cross between a male brown dog with a genotype big B little b and a female gray dog with the genotype little b little b. The male dog's genotype has two different alleles but the phenotype brown is seen and that means that the dominant allele here is brown and the reason why you're not seeing gray in him is because it's recessive so it's hidden. The male dog's genotype has two different alleles and this means that he is heterozygous, different alleles. But on the other hand, the gray female dog is homozygous because the alleles that make up her genotype are the same, little b and little b. She is gray only because she has two recessive alleles that code for gray. But if she had at least one dominant brown allele, if you know what I mean, her phenotype would have been brown. But it's not. It is gray because she has two recessive alleles which code for gray fur. Okay, so back to Punnett squares. To make a Punnett square, just draw a square with four sections like this one. Next, put the male's alleles of his genotype on top of the two sections of the square like this. 
So his big B will come here and his little B will come here. And the female's genotype, her alleles will come to the side of the square. So her little B will go there and her second little B will go there. So to find all the possible genotypes of the cross, combine the alleles of both dogs in each section. So the first section will be big B, little b, um, because those two alleles came together. And the next one, the second one will be little b, little b. And the third one will be big B, little b. And guess what the fourth one will be? The fourth one will be little b, little b. So based on the genotypes, the phenotypes will be brown because big B, little b. Then since these two are recessive, it will be gray, that phenotype. And this one will be brown because at least one allele is dominant, which is brown. So it will come out brown. And the last one is little b, little b, and it will be gray. So these are how the puppies will look when they come out. You have a brown one. A gray one, another gray one, and a brown one. But this is not necessarily the order how they will come out. It is a completely random process. So the first one may come out gray or all may come out brown or all may come out gray. But these are just the combinations that could possibly happen. Um, these offspring are heterozygous, only the brown ones are heterozygous because they have two different alleles, but the, br the gray ones are homozygous because they have two of the same alleles, two little bees. Um, the Punit score predicted that half of the offspring will be brown, they will have the phenotype brown, and the other half will have the phenotype gray. But this is because of nature and how random it is, all may come out gray or all may come out brown. But this is just a prediction based on the combination of alleles. And that's exactly what the Punit square does. It makes predictions. But the more offspring that come from a cross, the more likely the results will be close to what the Punit square predicted. So if you have eight puppies, all of them are puffing up. Um, the more puppies that you have, so say we have eight, four will come out brown and four may come out gray. But still, this is very random. But at least we kind of predicted what may happen. But if it doesn't happen, it's not that the Punit square is wrong. It's just um, giving you combinations based on theory. So what have we learned from this video? We've learned that 1. Punet squares were developed by Dr. Reginald Punet. Number 2. Punet squares predict the possible types of genotypes that result from a cross. Number 3. Some alleles are dominant while some are recessive. 4. A phenotype is an observable characteristic due to the dominant allele. And number 5. The last thing that we learned. The more offspring that come from a cross, the more likely the results will be close to what the Punat square predicted. I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to check out my other videos that are just as helpful and easy as this one. Thanks for watching!